I probably should have done Bunyan. Right. Oh, there you are. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, Praise the Lord. <laughs> I know. I think I better close my, my, no, my Facebook is closed. So. Yeah. yeah. Let me Let close, close mine a second. second. Sorry. Oh. Can you? Let's see. You're at the Grand Canyon. There we go. All right. Well, yeah, I'm in two yeah, different two places. places. Sorry. Sorry. Hey, no problem. Okay, how's that? You got it. Hello, Ronald. I'm so glad you were able. You know, I, I was saying how ironic that it was that you were the first to log on and check your computer and check their connection a half hour or so before the show even started. And then when it's time to come on in, it's like suddenly it's like, ah! It's like, How are you doing, man? Well, I can't believe it. I'm so grateful to see you. Thank you so much for having me on. Happy New Year. <laughs> it's a great... Yeah. Yeah. It, well, it's going to be a great year. There's no question. <laughs> question in a lot of people's minds of whether it's going to be a great year coming up. Why do you think it's going to be such a terrific year? You're the well, I, I just think that it's a time for rebirth, uh, creation, renewal. And um, I've been very blessed because, um, as it turns out, um, it, I'm very, like, so close uh, to getting my fourth Fulbright. Uh, uh, through the State Department and uh, through the Fulbright program, uh, because the University of Patras in Greece wants me to come for six weeks to be a Fulbright specialist scholar to teach their students uh, in the Peloponnesian Islands at the university and to perform my show in uh, March and April. So uh, it's a great way to uh, uh, reach out again and uh, create new bridges of communication and to share um, my love and passion for theater and for art and for the art of transformation. What, what was the choice I had a question? Well, I, have a friend, yeah. I have a couple of friends who are Fulbrights, but how many Fulbrights have you done, Ronald? Well, this would be my fourth Fulbright. <laughs> I thought you could only get one. It never what occurred you, to me. What do you call that? Like a, it's like a Tony and Emmy. Uh... It's an overflowing bright. Yeah. It's, 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 you know. a two Fulbright. Well, I, I, I've been very blessed. I, I've been to Uruguay, uh, to Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, for six weeks, and Malaysia for six weeks to teach and perform. And now, I, you know, they've been, uh, it's been extraordinary. So to be able to uh, go out there uh, through the State Department and share uh, the, what it's all about, passion for living life to the fullest, and to share Harold Clerman and his great ideas and uh, to share American theater and to create this bridge of mutual understanding, especially at this time, we really need to reach out and uh, and share our open hearts. That's what it's about. Wow. Well, you share our, your open heart with us through your performances as well as you had. Well, so the book is about a year or two old, but remind people uh, about solo transformation on stage. Yeah, this, this is the book. <laughs> Uh, so, solo Transformation on Stage, it just came out, and it's about the art of transformation and creating your, only, your own solo performance, but also it's about everyone who wants to tell their stories, because it's all about storytelling. And uh, I've been blessed to be able to come out with this new book, and uh, on top of it, you know, my second book, Create, and also my first book, Acting Teachers of America. But then I've also been continuing with my newspaper, the Soul of the American Actor, which is at soulamericanactor.com. And uh, so it's been a great blessing. And on top of it, I'm in the midst of rewrites for my film, a screenplay uh, about uh, the, the story of the group theater called Group Paradise. And also my opera, I wrote What's the libretto. That, the well, yeah, no, no, yes, it's, I, it's... I wrote the libretto for the first opera ever written about Henrik Ibsen. And right now it's under consideration in uh, two places in Europe. Uh, so we're keeping our fingers crossed. You should just uh, ask the Fulbright people to do it. Uh, you know, <laughs> what do you do? What, do you sleep at all? Do you actually sleep? <laughs> well, no, no, no I, I think of every <laughs> night as New Year's Eve and I'm up all night long. Now, of course, I have to grab a few wings of sleep. But, uh, you know, it's just amazing because there's so much to share. And uh, I, I'm in the midst of writing another new new uh, play as well. So uh, that's also happening too. 
So, yeah, I mean, you are a classic New York creative person. You're just doing, always doing, and you have to keep the irons in the fire, as they say. So when you're not working on the opera, you're working on this. When you're not working on, on the screenplay, you've got, work, you've got to go act in Greece. And when, when you're not acting in Greece, you act in uh, Cornwall. So it's, it's basically, you know, that's... Well, I'm trying to emulate you, Dave. That's what it is. <laughs> because you're you're so extraordinary in my eyes and you're an inspiration for all of us. So I'm very, very grateful to be back on your show and celebrate the new year. I mean, we would totally have you on more often. We're just yeah, not doing like, the quizzes. Like my grandmother used to say, if you love what you do, you don't you never work a day in your life, right? Yeah, as uh, <laughs> I don't know if you heard that, but um, Joyce says, her grandma used to say, if you love what you do, you never actually work a day in your life. Um, which I, it sounds like you love everything you do, which is an amazing thing. It, it's absolutely true, because I think that if you do love what you do, uh, you don't have any time to think about anything else because you want to give as much of yourself to others. And the way to do it, I do it through art. Other people do it through their talents. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I've been normally a curious person my whole life, and there's so much to learn. Right now I'm reading... Uh, uh, Jimmy Carter's autobiography, which is fascinating. And uh, I'm reading about four or five other books. So it's a constant. Not one book at a time. Of course, <laughs> will not just be reading a book and then finishing it and putting it. No, it's like, I'm going to read this one. Oh, while I'm reading this one, let me read That's half right. a page of this. Half a page of this book back and forth. And, 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 back and, and forth. Board, you know? Um, yes. Now, by the way, we want to welcome someone, uh, oh, someone who just popped in and out of there. Uh, our beloved friend, Eva Heinemann, who is a theater critic and has been for, for quite a few years now. She hosts yes. a show called High Drama, which you can watch on YouTube and also on Facebook. And no, she's doing a disappearing act. She's got, there she, 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 oh, oh Eva, you have to unmute. So let me make sure, uh, we, we can't hear you yet. We've got a. I, I I kind of should have gotten ready before I, <laughs> I just put on my sparkly outfit and get all <laughs> evil. Well, Eva, say hello to Ronald Rand, the actor. Oh, and um, you know I know that. you. Oh, come on, we've done of your course. together. But that game thing you do, that that, that excruciating game you put. <laughs> oh, Eva, we seem to have lost your feed there. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you ever so much, Eva. Um, how was your year, Eva? How was uh, your 2023? Oh, I don't know. Probably awful. <laughs> <laughs> but I laughed my way through it, no matter how dreadful. Well, what's it? I mean, let's leave aside the world. Let's leave aside, you know, the stuff that's been going on that, that Rabbi Saul will talk about. But But why was your... Was it awful just personally, or was it just okay, or actually not bad? I don't know. It's like it's funny. It's like I can't even think about what I had for breakfast today. I'm like, really? All of a sudden, my mind just went blank, and I haven't even had my champagne yet. All right, then, Eva. I'll tell you what. I'll ask you a question that I'll bet you will be able to answer. What were your favorite one or two or three shows that you saw? this year on or off Broadway or off off Broadway. Oh, that's so many of them. Um, oh, but I do want to say, I want to say there's this theater company that I just love. They have never done anything terrible. I mean, the, usually I have like any one of my favorite companies or theater people or writers, they all have like one bad show. You're all a lot of clunker, you know, which always breaks my heart. I mean, even Horton Foote had a clunker once, but you know, and but so far, New Life Theater Project, everything they do has been wonderful. I love them. New Life Theater, what have they done? Um, um, well, you might have known a while ago, they did something called Hitler's Tasters. Hmm, I, I remember when that opened. I, I haven't been in New York, but I remember when that opened, yeah. Yeah, th that's one of them. I don't know, they just do so many different things and they're doing so many at the moment. It's like they're like attached to other things. It's like, I should have written things down, but I didn't. Well, no, that's fine. I mean, this is just, we're just bantering. I want to ask Ronald Rand though, uh, mm -hmm. in terms of, um, did you see any theater this year and what, what really stuck with well, you? Well, yes, I, I go to the theater as much as I can, but uh, one of the shows that I did see was by Hershey Felder 
which was at uh, 59 East 59th. Uh, right. Monsieur that's Chopin. Chopin. Doing it. It's the, uh, the, the, not Gershwin, it's um, Chopin, right? No, oh, it's Chopin, yes. And uh, it, he's actually in my book, Solo Transformation on Stage. So it was a wonderful show. I'm sorry, we have a, we have, Unicorn is kind of barging in. Oh, Hershey has been on this program. He's a friend of the neighborhood. But I'm very happy <laughs> to hear that this was a particularly good performance of his. I was, I was like... Oh, everybody who was there just couldn't get enough of it. And he's such an extraordinary performer. And I had the opportunity to interview him uh, for my book, Solo Transformation on Stage. So he's in there. And it's so nice to see uh, Mr. Unicorn for the new year. Yes. <laughs> he, he was feeling horny, so he decided to come on. No, I, I, I caught up my rhinoceros. It, it, oh, it's it's very cute, Eva. My God. So, Eva, you tell us one other, um, uh, and then we got to cycle off for some other guests, but... but What's another show? You mentioned the theater company that you really like, The New Light. Oh, well, on Broadway, I mean, they brought back Gutenberg. They brought, oh, Gutenberg the musical. They yeah, I saw Broadway. that. When, I saw that when it was at New York Music Festival. Yeah. I, I saw it with uh, Jeremy Seamus and Christopher Fitzgerald. I saw it with uh, Daryl Goldstein and Kevin Calhoun. And now I get to see it on Broadway finally. And Alfie hates the theater. This is the one thing he said I want to see. Because oh but it was so damn funny, and it is. It's hysterical. Oh, yeah. By the way, Alfie is Eva's son. How's Alfie doing? Um, he's got Actually, he's at work right now. What? what does he do? He works at Dwayne Reed, where apparently they, they love to rob people. At Dwayne Reed, they <laughs> let the thieves get away with it because they said, don't bother them. So, so Alfie says, oh, we're open on Christmas for the robbers. Well, I mean, are they... Like at gunpoint robbers, are they just walking away with like detergent to, to make drugs or something? No, no, they're just shoplifting people. And they're not, you're not supposed to stop them, right? You just kind of right. let them. Yeah, leave them, leave them alone. It's yeah. what a wonderful world. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as, as Alfie doesn't get hurt. I mean, as long as, you he's know, like, let he's him. He's an adult. He's an adult. He's not. He's well, he's in his 20s, yeah, but yeah, nobody yeah. wants to be. Uh, so Joyce and I were at a coffee shop. Oh, last yeah. week, and and someone took the tip jar. Someone just jammed her hand in the tip jar for the the baristas, and rang out the door. Oh, wow! I mean, it's, it's you know this is the world we live in. This is that this is. Terrible. And, and, and I'm just happy they didn't catch me. So you know um, what? <laughs> they're charging four four dollars for an iced tea. Come on. That that is actually the real robbery. Yeah. You know, it's twenty six <laughs> to make an iced tea. You know, maybe one penny more for the labor. I mean, it's like four and a half dollars. I'm like, yeah, who's Robin Hood? Who really is? And you expect a tip? You really know? Please. Anywho, guys, it is wonderful to see you in the neighborhood. Uh, Ronald, I want, I want to wish you health. I want to wish you a great time in Greece. Uh, Thank you. you. The performance. I can, I'm old enough to do Harold Clerman myself now. So if, they, if you need to study. You know, Thank you. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, Opa! Opa! <laughs> Happy New Year. Bye, Ronald. I'll see you real soon. All right. Ciao, ciao. <laughs>